investment could be in the form of uh, bonds means they are like lenders or it could be in the form of equity some kind of a stake purchase in the other firm whatever may be that case all these are classified as inter corporate investment and the main essence of this chapter is how do i handle this inter corporate assess, uh, investments as a part of the financial statements what are the various classifications that are existing and uh, how is the typical uh, uh, allocation done in the financial statements for each kind of classification with that as the base let's uh, get on to it so the prime categories that we talk about when it comes to inter corporate investments is how are the inter corporate investments classified majorly we see them classified into four categories we call them as investments in financial assets investment in associate firms business combinations or joint ventures so whenever this company invests in the other firm that investment gets classified into one of these four categories and the namings are primarily based on the percentage of ownership so probably uh, if you are having if you have bought less than 20% stake if your investment is worth less than 20% of this firm's value then we call it as investment in financial assets if whatever you have uh, invested in the other firm it is equal to somewhere between 20 to 50% of the total value of this firm then we call it as investment in associates if you have invested in the assets if you have invested in this particular firm and uh, your investment amount is more than 50% of this uh, value of this firm then we treat it as a business combination and if two or more uh, companies come out uh, for a joint influential control on this firm then we call it as a joint venture so one way you can classify the various uh, investments in other firms is based on the proportion of the ownership but more than the proportion of the ownership what influences those investments is the level of control that you exhibit on the operations and the management of that particular company so generally if you have less than 20% stake your level of control is much much lesser so when your level of control is lesser and your stake is less than 20% we classify those kind of investments as investment in financial assets you have just invested passively your investment is just to earn some kind of returns on that or it could be a kind of a simple diversification process from your side where your stake is a very minority stake in the in the other firm means you don't have any kind of a controlling stake or influencing stake on the operations of the firm but when we talk about 20 to 50% generally we say that you can influence the operations of the firm but not control influence means okay you can have some of the members as a part of the board of the company you can get involved in policy making but you cannot control because you don't have more than 50% of the stake someone else is having the 50% uh, plus stake in the firm so such kind of investments we call it as investment in associates but however even if you have less than 50% but still you are able to control the operations of that particular firm then we can treat it as business combination so it's not a proportion of ownership uh, uh, alone but even if the proportion of the ownership does not exist to that extent but the control exists 
then you can classify it uh, accordingly so if the, if you are able to control the operations of the firm even if the stake is less than 50% i can classify it as a business combination only whereas on the other side if even if i have less than 20% but i am able to influence strongly the operations i can classify it as investment in associate but still even with 20 to 50% but still i am not able to influence at all and i am investing it purely on a passive note then it's better that i classify my investment as investment in financial assets itself so probably the other dimension to this classification is control no influence and no control influence but no control is investment in associates influence and control is the investment in business combination and finally when i say joint venture the control is not with one party control is with more than two or more parties right control is with uh, two or more parties then it goes into a joint venture control is with one significant party goes as a business combination no control but influence on the operations goes as investment in associates and uh, no control no influence just a passive investment goes as a part of investment in financial assets now we will deal with uh, what kind of methods that we use from the financial uh, statements perspective how do you handle these four kinds of investments the way we look at them are in the when it comes to financial assets we have to classify them either as held to maturity i have invested in that particular asset with an intention to hold it up to the maturity period or i'll say available for sale i may sell it in the near future i may not hold it until the maturity period probably uh, uh, somewhere in the middle itself i may be selling it off that is what i treat it as available for sale and fair value through profit and loss these are the ones which are purely held from the trading perspective i may sell them in the near future itself so probably it's like if i have to classify these three investments these are held up to maturity these are sold off the last ones fair value through profit or loss which are held purely from the perspective of trading no synergy nothing i am investing just to make a short term profit and hardly within 3 months i may be selling them off those are typically uh, classified as fair value through profit and loss uh, kind of investments and anything which does not fall either into this category or in this category i can put it under available for sale so whenever i am talking about investment in financial assets it has to go into one of these three categories and when it comes to investment in associates we will discuss about the equity method of representation we will we'll discuss in depth uh, with an example when it comes to investment in associates or even for joint ventures the method which we will be using from an accounting dimension or from a financial statements representing a part we will be using the equity method whereas when it comes to the business combinations where the stake is more than 50% and it's a controlling kind of a stake we will go for an acquisition method of preparing uh, the financial statements okay we have to look at what is this equity method and what is this uh, acquisitions uh, method right we will uh, will uh, spend some time in terms of understanding but before that we will uh, look at one by one first let's start with uh, investing in the financial assets so whenever we are talking about uh, investment in the financial assets we as i said we will be categorizing them as either held to maturity or held for trading which is uh, fair value through profit or loss or even available for sale so whenever i am talking about uh, any investment in financial asset we are we are noting it in the balance sheet at the time of buying we will specify we will document 
the balance sheet we will make a recognition in the balance sheet at the cost of acquisition cost of purchasing that asset we will try to represent that number as a part of the balance sheet that is uh, at the time of acquisition but on an ongoing basis whenever that particular uh, entity whether it's a stock or a bond whenever that particular entity declares a dividend or an interest that is shown in the income statement as a part of dividend income or interest income which will go generally as a part of other income so what is it here whenever we are dealing with uh, financial assets any financial asset it could be held to maturity or uh, held for trading or available for sale any of these whenever we have uh, purchased this asset we represent at the cost in the balance sheet under the heading of investments and uh, on a regular ongoing basis whenever that particular uh, company or whenever that particular stock or the bond declares a dividend or an interest that is captured as a part of net in, uh, uh, other income as a as either a dividend income or interest income in the income statement but how do i differentiate between these three when i say this particular security is held till maturity so generally it is applicable to the bond instruments wherein i have purchased it today and only i will be uh, redeeming them on their maturity date itself which i know a upfront itself let's say a 5 year maturity i'm going to redeem it only at the end of 5 years it's very rare that i will redeem it somewhere in the middle so those kind of securities are classified as held to mature securities and whenever we have a held to mature uh, security we generally the way we report it is at the time of acquisition we take the amortized cost which is nothing but the cost at which we have acquired that uh, asset made that investment but that uh, investment we could have made it either at a premium or at a discount right so so when i say amortized cost i am representing the cost of purchase which i might have done either at a discount or at a premium so let me talk about uh, some small example regarding this let's say i have invested in a bond i think i have a numerical yeah i am investing in a bond whose face value is 1000 okay face value is 1000 today i am purchasing that bond at 975.13 so year 0 i am purchasing it at 975.13 and it is paying a 9% annual coupon so in year 1 this is going to pay me 90 bucks and year 2 this is going to pay me another 90 and in year 3 this is going to pay me 1090 these are the cash flows that are associated so in the first year in my balance sheet i will represent 975 as a part of my investment asset so let me come back okay expected fair value at the end of the year fair enough so we'll talk about what will happen at the end of the year okay today at the time of acquisition i'll come back here today at the time of acquisition i will show 975.13 that is what is my amortized cost So today I will show 975.13 as my investment asset, and of course cash will go down. So this is the transaction that typically happens on the day of acquisition. Now 